My friends, welcome to another tutorial about creating games with Solaris. In this episode, we'll introduce shaders, how to create nice and various visual effects like um, color effects, um, light effects, reflections, transitions, scaling, and more. Um, shaders in video games allow to uh, efficiently um, play with pixels of of a texture basically. So a shader is a program that is executed in the GPU, in the graphic card, and not in software. So um, you have a shader folder here in your uh, quest. I think there are two uh, built-in shaders that are provided by default, but you can find more in uh, Solaris Free Resource Pack or in other quests. Um, if you double click a shader, it will uh, show a preview of that shader applied to either some picture that you decide or a map or a sprite. This is only the, the preview. So yeah, this example is a grayscale shader and a shader is composed of two programs. The first one is the vertex shader which modifies the geometry of a texture and the fragment shader that modifies uh, the pixel values of the shader, of the texture, sorry. So this one is quite simple, I would say, because it will keep, it will just, let's say, change the uh, color value of every pixel. So, Shaders in uh, Solaris are in um, GLSL, which means OpenGL Shading Language. It's a special language that is provided by uh, OpenGL or OpenGL uh, ES for embedded systems. Um, and yeah, it's quite low level. And this program is uh, will be run by the the GPU. For every pixel of the of the input texture, it will call this main function and it will have to define this uh, special value frag color which is the color of the output pixel um, so this one is is quite short but again there are more advanced examples of uh, GLSL shaders anyway the uh, scope of this tutorial is not to learn the GLSL uh, language uh, because it will take way too much time and uh, I'm really not an expert by the way but we can still do some uh, quite basic things uh, without learning much about shaders about GLSL oops sorry so let's create a new shader and we'll call it blue Um, I will uncheck this um, scaling factor checkbox. Oh, sorry, my my quest editor is currently in French. Let me fix this real quick. And by the way, this is the documentation of uh, shaders in Solaris. I would really recommend you to to read about that. Okay, I'm opening my shader again. So, no scaling factor because this is a uh, this is not a shader uh, meant to uh, to scale the the pixel of the game. And let's use our map here to uh, uh, as the the preview. Um, so for now, I have no. I didn't check use a vertex shader or use a fragment shader, which means a default one with, will be used uh, for both. So let's check use a fragment shader and let's create it. Um, so when you create a new fragment shader using this button here, it will uh, provide you with a default one uh, with a lot of um, compatibility macros here. Uh, these are meant to make your shader program 
compatible with as most uh, devices as possible. So not only various OpenGL versions, but also OpenGL ES versions, so that it will also work hopefully on mobile devices. Um, so we don't have to understand all the details here, um, but the main thing to know is that this main function will be called for every pixel of the output texture. And it has to define this frag color um, value. So here the default shader will actually keep all pixels unchanged, but we can very easily just add one line to have fun and change the colors. Um, so frag color here is a vector of three values and we can modify it like this. Vector of three values with, so the first value will be red. So if I really do just that, actually it will again not change anything because I'm just copying the same pixel values. Um, this RGB values are all between zero and one. So floating point numbers and not uh, integers between zero and uh, 255. So yeah, all between zero and one. So if we want to make it blue and darker, our pixel, we, we can just remove some of the red and remove some of the, of the green. So since it is already between zero and one, we can mm, multiply it by 0 0.3, for instance. Same for green, and we keep the blue unchanged. And voila, you already have a very basic uh, night effect. Uh, maybe it's, it doesn't look so nice, especially with water here. But again, this is just an example to, to understand uh, the principle. So here we, we we are just previewing the the effect of our shader here, but the shader is not used yet in anywhere in in your quest. If you run the game, uh, nothing special happens. But yeah, so if if you read the documentation, it will explain how to apply your shader in Solaris. So you can apply your shader either to the whole window of your program, of the, your Solaris Quest, or to any surface, text surface or sprite. So let's start with applying our shader here. Again, we, are, we just added one line to get this blue, uh, this dark blue effect. Let's begin by um, applying our shader to, to the whole window when we are on on uh, this map, which one is it? This one. When we are on some map, we want to apply the shader. So here I'm in the Lua script in my map of my map. And when the map starts, uh, we want to apply the shader to the whole window. So. We can do that with sol.video.setShader. And here we need to pass the shader object. To create the shader object, let's create it outside the function. Um, blue shader is sol.shader.create. And here we need to pass the file name here of our shader without extension. So it's just blue. And we pass we pass our blue shader to sol.video.setShader. Okay, let's try. And there we go, it works. We have applied the shader to the whole screen on this map. So when this map starts, um, if I go to another map, it will still be applied. Um, and this is because we we decided to apply it to, to the whole window and the window persists, of course, when you 
go to another map. So what you can do is, when the map finishes, you can remove any shader from the window by doing that. Set shader nil. I have to walk a little bit just to be able to go to another map, sorry. The shader was just removed and if I come back again it will be applied. Okay, it works. Um, so this is the, an example of applying the shader to the whole window, but uh, a lot of times you want to apply shader to individual objects, so to a particular surface or to a particular sprite. Uh, for instance, an enemy or here, maybe what we want to do is to uh, apply the shader to our map and its objects, but not to uh, the head-up display here, because the, we don't want the buttons or the hearts or, or the money counter here to, to also be darkened. So to do that, instead of applying the shader to the window, we will apply it to the surface from the, the camera of the map. Uh, so what we can do is um, map get camera get surface so this provides the the pixel surface of the camera and set shader blue shader and actually we can also get rid of that because the camera belongs to to the map so when you leave the map uh, the camera and its shader will be will be gone and yeah, it works. This time our buttons are, are still looking nice and bright while the map is, is dark. Cool. So now you know how to apply a shader to an individual surface. Um, so again here, the fact that I se I'm selecting a map here is completely independent of what happens to, to the game. It, it is just used for the preview. I can preview my shader on, on any map or on any picture or sprite. For instance, if you want to see how it would like on a particular enemy, I don't know. Um, oops, why doesn't it work? Not sure. Yeah, maybe there is a small bug with this selector or this sprite, I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, you can also choose to, to show side by side the preview or the just the input or just the output or also the, the swipe mode. So here it's the position of your mouse that will uh, define the limit between uh, the input and the output. So that, that can be... That can be really nice. Uh, let's keep side by side for now. And um, okay, as a last um, example, we will now um, use what is called uniforms to to pass some information from Solaris to the the shader. Um, by default, Solaris uh, will send some values, all of these values that are documented uh, to the GLSL program. And one that is particularly interesting, you don't have to understand them all in details, but one that is particularly interesting is uh, the time. So the number of milliseconds that are passed since the Solaris uh, simulation was started. This is actually the same that uh, we would have in, in Lua in, when you call sol.main.get get elapsed time. Um, and using that, we can indeed do some shader effects that will depend on time. 
So let's say that instead of multiplying our uh, color value by 0 0.3, we'll multiply it by uh, something that will depend on time, that will oscillate with time, and we we'll call that variable darkness. And if we want to generate something that um, goes from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 again and again, uh, we can use the sinus function and pass to our sinus function uh, the simulation time. So maybe not the number of milliseconds because it would oscillate way too fast. You can try and you will see it's not really uh, <laughs> not really nice to see, but let, let's divide it by 1000 just to have a number of seconds instead of milliseconds. Oh, I forgot the semicolon here. If you, if you save your shader, which I did with control S, and there is a syntax error, it will immediately tell you here. And here, solve time is not defined, um, yet it is a uniform automatically uh, passed by Solaris. But actually, um, even the, the uniform values that are built in must be declared in your shader. They are passed as input if they are declared. And you can declare it here with the rest of the uniform values. Oops. And by the way, they are called uniform because um, it means that they are the same. The value is the same for every pixel. Even if it changes at, at every frame because it, it is actually the time. For one particular frame, your main function, remember that it will be called for every pixels, every pixel. So the, the time value is the same for every pixel during one frame. Um, okay, oh, it works. And just like that, you have almost a, a nice um, day and night effect. A very basic one just with a sinus function, but you get the idea, then you can improve it. Or you can probably find some some better night shaders in uh, on the internet. There are tons of various shaders, either in the Solaris community or in GLSL in, in general. So now that you have the basics, I hope that you will have fun with, with shaders. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to join our Discord. Again, you can find nice examples of shaders on the internet, but also on um, our quests, in, uh, in particular the free resource pack. Also in, in the Discord channel, we, there are always uh, people who, who share very cool stuff. Um, yeah, I hope you learned something and I will see you in another video. Take care. Bye.